Welcome to another episode of The Chosen Scoop. I'm Jim Luff for Chosen Payments. Joining me today is Brian Alter. Brian is the owner of Alter's Gem Jewelry in Beaumont, Texas. Welcome to the program, Brian. Glad to be here. So let's jump right into this. The Chosen Scoop is an opportunity for us to um, share with our viewers information about some of our other merchants. So um, how long have you been in the jewelry business and how did you get started in that business? We're 107 years old. I'm guessing you didn't start that, Brian. Well, I work out. I eat right. You know, I take care of myself. Obviously. I'm third generation. Third generation. So um, was it your great grandfather that started it? Grandfather. Grandfather that started it. And so you kind of grew up in the business. I wrapped my first gift when I was seven years old. Wow, that's fantastic. So, you know, we're, we're recording this shortly after, you know, a couple of weeks after Valentine's took place. What is the effect of Valentine's on jewelers? Well, Valentine is a season for love. It's very cliche, but it's always been true. Um, it is, it's fun. We gave away, one of the things that we do is give away a dozen roses with any purchase of $100 or more. And we gave away over 250 dozen roses this year. Well, so it was fun. Yeah, I'd say that's doing good. Um, do you see uh, an exponential increase in weddings that occur around Valentine's Day? Um, I don't know that I see the, so much weddings. I mean, it is an engagement season for sure. The But it's it, Valentine's impacts everybody. I mean, husbands are buying gifts for wives and sometimes even for, for daughters. We had several uh, fathers bring their daughters in and buy them their first piece of jewelry, whether it's a, you know, whether it was a diamond pendant or just something inexpensive. We have one, it was really funny. I wish I had it on video. We had one father who gave his daughter a small gift and a dozen roses and asked her to be his Valentine in the store. And she had to stop and think about it. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> it was really funny. Oh, wow. I get, I bet you get to see um, some pretty happy moments as, as couples are picking out engagement rings and, and, you know, picking out jewelry of a lifetime. I'm sure that that must be rewarding for you. But, you know, what we do, and I, I've taught my staff this for 40 years, is that what we do, it's not about the jewelry. And it's actually never been about the jewelry. It's about how we help people in their lives. Wow, I love that. So so any other big holidays, I would imagine that maybe Mother's Day and Christmas are also big holidays for you? Well, Christmas by far for the entire retail season, not just jewelry, but the retail market in general is by far the biggest season of the year because that's nationwide gift giving. Um, right. You know, Valentine's is for couples and Mother's Day is for, you know, mothers, either yeah. your own mother or the mother of your children or, you know, of that nature. So you're celebrating that. But there's those are more limited audiences. Christmas is a, na a nationwide audience. I think maybe for Mother's Day, um, you could buy some jewelry that has like the birthstone of all of your children to give to your wife. I don't know. Is that a thing? You know, in the 70s and 80s and 90s, mother's rings were big deals. We used to build mother's rings by the hundreds. Mother's rings now, mother's rings, mother's pendants are not nearly as important as just giving her a piece of jewelry that she would enjoy wearing every day all the time. Uh, so we focus more on what people will love versus something that is just focused on a single holiday event. That's interesting that that uh, that tradition has kind of faded away. And um, I, that leads me to my next question. Technology has certainly had an impact on all aspects of our life. As we continue moving forward, there's so much more technology than we used to have. Has technology impacted the jewelry industry? And if so, in what way? It's, take, it's severely impacted the jewelry industry in both positive and negative ways. Um, there is a... Uh, the, you know, the easy answers relate to the plethora of information out on the Internet, um, some of which is accurate, a lot of which is not. There is a plethora of pictures and information available on social media, some of which is, are, is really good for clients and some of which from an, you know, they I, we just had a situation where a client had a picture of a ring that was an oval diamond set in only Four very narrow prongs on an extremely skinny band. It's very feminine. It's very beautiful. It's not necessarily very safe. 
And so we've had that discussion with the client because when you're putting a two or three carat diamond on a very, very skinny band and you're only putting four prongs on it and they're very thin, narrow prongs, we're concerned about the structural integrity of the ring and making sure that the diamond is safe. So it's there's pros and cons about that that, that needs some, some discussion. But in general, it's definitely changed the way every retail has has uh, operates the jewelry industry, the shoe industry, the travel industry, the furniture industry. Uh, the more information there is about out there, the more we deal with it. I've had five emails this morning from companies in India asking me about doing business. You know, 30 years ago, that would have taken a letter that would have taken three weeks to get here. And now it happens instantaneously. So it, but at the same time, it's also broadened our horizons. I now have clients in 47 states, active clients. I've had, I've been to sale in every state in the country, but I have active clients in 47 states. 30, 40 years ago, that would be a harder thing to say that people can do. Yeah, I, I think the internet has definitely perpetuated a growth of small business to a national footprint um, simply because there are so many um, people that are available to watch. Um, you know, you, your audience is far beyond Beaumont, Texas. Your audience is the world now. And the internet has perpetrated that. I think another thing that I've seen in my personal life is that um, we've created a now society. You talk about three weeks to get a letter here. And now people want to order their Starbucks on their phone and walk in and pick it up. They don't want to wait in line. They want to walk in and just pick it up and have it ordered. Um, Domino's has a great pizza app to have a pizza delivered to your house. I have the app on my phone. So my last favorite order, I hit reorder. I'm at home and my credit card's already on file and the pizza is on its way. And it takes me all of about one minute to order a pizza where, you know, back in the day, you'd probably call Shakey's Pizza. You'd sit on hold for 20 minutes, then finally get your pizza order in and then wait for an hour for it to show up. Um, Domino. Well, you are dating yourself when you're talking about Shakey's Pizza, Jim. I know, right? As well, soon that's as that's where said, technology. Just to, I don't mean to interrupt. That's no, where, no problem. You know, the company that you represent, your chosen payments, and organizations like it come in because without the technology to allow for instantaneous payment that is secure and safe and reliable, none of these things could happen. So, Great point. You know, that's where you know I remember as a teenager when MasterCard and Visa were first getting started and people were coming to see my father and asking if we would as a company be willing to accept it, you know, and you probably don't even know this name, but there was a card called Zip Charge. No. Nope. Zip Charge eventually got absorbed by Master Charge, which then became MasterCard, but is, you know, and originally Visa was Bank AmeriCard, now I'm dating myself, but it was, you know, all these technologies were just coming into vogue back then it was all cash and check and your own internal accounts receivable credit system if you offered it. Yeah. Well, those days have changed. Yes. I, I actually uh, did a story yesterday, an educational story that uh, the very first credit card was 1950 and it was the diners uh, card. That and, is um, and there were only, I believe, I can't remember the number exactly, but it was limited to about 28 restaurants located within the city of New York. But, it was a universally accepted credit card that could be used in multiple establishments. Um, and that was kind of the beginning of the credit card era. Um, we, we started talking about technology and I know that you use a software uh, to manage your jewelry store called Business Mind. Correct. We've, been, we've actually been working with Business Mind for well over 20 years. And, and tell me, um, for those of us that don't know, what are some of the, the offerings of Business Mind that you use? That is it inventory control? Is it what, what is it? Well, it, historically, it's been several things because we've had platform changes with Business Mind several times. When we first signed on to Business Mind, we were actually we had more stores than we have now. And we were looking for somebody that could handle multiple store operations and multi, you know, in that manner. And it was a completely integrated system with accounts receivable, accounts payable, general journal, all that stuff. Well, times have changed. That was before QuickBooks became dominant and, you know, or other things like NetSuite or other companies that are out there. And so these companies that are jewelry industry focused have actually gotten more focused on what's most important to us, which is inventory control, customer relations management, that type of thing. And the back office accounting part of this has been they now download into 
Excel or QuickBooks. Excel is a company, not Microsoft Excel, but a different company. Or, okay. Not, excuse me, not Excel. Zero is who they they recommend, but Zero, QuickBooks, other organizations like that, in order to operate your back office financial management, and they manage our inventory and then help us work because they're Shopify enabled. Help us to work to take you know our product online for clients who want to buy it, and so we're. We haven't done we haven't taken advantage of everything because the most recent platform change is just a little over 15, 16 months old. And we're still learning a lot of what they've changed to. But it's really very cool stuff. Uh, I think this would be a good time for me to share with our viewers that we uh, chosen payments integrates with business mind software and does the back end credit card processing for business mind. So it's certainly a valuable partnership to us. And when we have a merchant that's using a valued independent software vendor, um, it's kind of what we call a perfect marriage. So um, speaking of that, I understand that you're going to be moving uh, from using PCs in your store to using tablets. Um, what facilitated that change and what improvements do you expect to see as a result of the implementation? Well, we haven't done it yet. We are looking at it because DCIT, which is business mind, is, is beta testing, moving off of desktops and onto tablets. And I think eventually probably onto mobile phone applications where it makes working with a client in the store easier because you literally can walk with a tablet or potentially with your cell phone around the store. And as a client makes a decision, you can actually just begin to add things to the POS ticket instead of having to carry everything up front or you know, doing it in the old fashioned processing way where you go to our cashier station, and do it. It makes it easier to, to, to process. Now there's, we, you know, we have to learn how to, how this is going to work. We have to see, how this is going to apply. But from the standpoint of moving forward, I was in a two and a half hour meeting ye yesterday with a very high profile branded entity. I won't say who Rolex um, that talks about store design and how new store design is trying to move away from <laughs> this traditional across the counter presentation into a more interactive motion where you're actually kind of selling on the same side of the counter as the client. And I think that's a positive move. And so we've actually slated to redesign our entire showroom, probably in the 2025 timeframe, give or take a year. Uh, we literally will take our showroom down to the studs because I think we need to do that to modernize and stay current with what's happening around the country. And so part of this, being able to use a tablet or a cell phone and walk around the store. And because I anticipate our store design to be more inclusive in that manner where we're on the same side of the counter with the client as much as we can be in following what's, what, what's happening in the world. So yeah. it makes it easier. You can't, you can't operate a store with desktops and big screens and noisy printers in that type of environment so we're we're looking forward we're we're trying very hard to become paperless yeah i so, love the adaptability yeah so the uh, dcit allows for e receipts to be emailed and so we're working towards doing that there's we still you know there's a little bit of rub in doing that because the court I get system, it. if there's if there's ever a dispute the court system still wants hard copies they don't accept emails as evidence so You've got some, there's some documentation legalities that have to occur with that. But for the most part, that's the tail wagging the dog to assume that, that, that that's a problem. So it's, you know, we're trying to go paperless. We're trying to become more immediate. We're trying to be able to deliver things to clients in an Amazon. What is, you know, you described it. I would describe it as an Amazon Prime world. And yeah. it's changed the relationship that clients have with re retailers because if i can get it tomorrow on amazon why can't i get it tomorrow in a brick and mortar store and that has created some challenges as well because clients sure. don't really understand the manufacturing process and i'm i'm definitely um well as you mentioned i dated myself with the shakies reference but um i have a big filing cabinet behind me and uh, I file all of my receipts in there and my water bill, my electricity bill. Um, I keep everything. And and my wife is forever telling me that we're living in a paper paperless world and you can just scan that stuff in your computer and store it 
and leave, leave it there in case you need it later. And I don't know the, um, I, I recently unsubscribed to the newspaper because I found it was not popular anymore and it was shrinking. And, uh, let's face it. I mean, you find out anything that you want to know about what's going on on social media before you find out on regular media anymore. So I just felt it was a waste of time, but um, I'm reading the paper online, but it just doesn't have the same feel as holding a newspaper in my hand and flipping the pages. I am definitely old school. Um, you know, there's there are right ways, and I should let me back that up. Different strokes for different folks. Yeah, there are. We have clients that are extremely visual; they have to see it, touch it, feel it in order to be able to purchase it. We have other clients that when I make a description of the item that they would like to have over the phone, they say, Brian, I trust you. You have great taste. Just send it to me. And I do. So you, every entity serves different needs. The newspaper today has never been designed to be immediate information. It's Correct. detailed information. The immediate information is the headline on social media or on you know, CNN or Fox or whatever networks you choose to watch. But if you want to find out what the details are and you want to read the whole story, that's what the newspapers are. So it's, you know, and that's, you, you still, you see the kind of entities like the Washington Post and the New York Times and some of these other entities that are still, you know, doing r r r really, really well. But our local paper, like your local paper, apparently is losing readership. And quite honestly, we unsubscribed a long time ago. Uh, yeah, we don't have we don't have landlines anymore because we didn't we don't use them. Everybody walks around with a cell phone now. So, it, you know, the world is changing and we have to change with it. We had meetings yesterday with staff about what's happening. And even though uh, we're very blessed, uh, we have an average. Uh, the average tenure of our staff is in excess of 20 years. It's not like one person or two people that have been here over 20 years. The average tenure, I have two 40 year plus staff members. I have five 30 year plus staff members. And then I have a plethora of people under 10, but it's, uh, you know, we all have to relearn because technology is changing and we have to keep up with it. And buyer's habits are going to change and we can't control that. And we can't go back to 1965. Uh, and we have to be in, you know, so we have to find ways to move, con to continue to move forward. Um, you brought up a point earlier or, or caused me to think of a point anyway, that, um, you know, there is a lot of untruth out on the Internet. Uh, if somebody is looking for a jeweler within their own community, where's a good place to start for a referral of a good jeweler, a reputable jeweler? You know, for different people, there's not a direct answer to that. You can obviously okay. go online and look at reviews and read reviews. Uh the, the, the challenge there is that the unfortunate part of human nature is people tend to complain more than they accolade. So you have to be careful about what you read, because if somebody's writing an angry review, they're doing it emotionally. And people yeah. that are really happy will give you five stars, but generally won't comment beyond that because they're happy. Here's your five stars. Congratulations. And they move on. Absolutely. So, you know, we we the reason that I have clients in 47 states is referrals. One of the things that I really have fun with personally is I maintain what I call referral chains. It's like seven degrees to Kevin Bacon. Only I have a referral chain right now that's now 22 people long from where it started to where it, where it ends. And the fun with that sometimes is uh, one of my clients is in San Francisco and I did business with him for five years before I ever met him for personally. Business took me out there. We went to dinner, met him for, for the first time, and I started going through the chain. Well, I got to you from X, and then I got to X from Y, and he knew Y, and I got to Y from Z. He had no idea who Z was. So it's, you know, all this stuff is really kind of fun, um, but it, referral is the most powerful tool. And so if you've got friends that have been really, really happy with the service they've received and the quality that they've received, that's the best place to start. Well, there you have it. So you can look at your friend's fingers and, and, and necklaces and see what they have. And if you like it, ask them where they got it. And uh, that might be the best way to go. I'll, um, give you another, I'll give you another little hint behind that. Sure. One of the things that we teach our staff a lot 
is that when clients are shopping for a piece of jewelry, they will shop the world. Okay? Yeah. They'll go online, they'll read whatever they can read, they'll verify pricing, they'll uh, they'll probably shop three or four stores. They, they'll, they'll shop the world to save a penny. And and obviously you do online sales, Brian? We do, but it's, it, let me finish this statement, then we'll come back sure. to that. Ask, where do you take your jewelry to be repaired? People okay. don't shop the world for repair. They take it to the place that they trust the most to get it done correctly. So if you really want to see who the most reputable jeweler in town, who's doing, who's fixing everything, who's taking care of it that way, because that's the guy that you trust the most, because that's the guy that's going to take care of it going in and going out. Great advice. Great advice. Um, and, and for you, um, what's the website address? And we'll throw it up as a graphic on the screen so that people can www.hellodiamonds.com. HelloDiamonds.com. So there you go, folks. If you're watching and you want to see Brian's jewels, uh, that would be a great place to start. Um, we have been doing business with Brian for quite some time. Do you know how many years it is, Brian? I mean, I know well, I can I tell you, I can tell you that I was probably the initial contact that put together Business Man with Chosen Payments. So does that tell you how far back he goes? Um, I'm, I'm the one that initiated that contact with Chris at DCIT and uh, Jeff Brodsley in those days to get this done. All right. Well, that was before my time. I joined the company in 2016 and um, it was already in existence when I joined. So you've been with us for definitely a long time. Yes. Um, in, Go ahead. Did you have? No. That's... So um, I have truly enjoyed talking with you this morning and, um, and hope that people watching got something out of this that they can walk away with. If nothing else, um, if you're a fellow jeweler, you might want to check out Business Mind. Um, I certainly look forward to your transition to the tablets and following we that. We're excited about it. When it happens. I, I think that's probably late 2022, early 2023. Because okay. DCIT is still beta testing it right now. Ah, uh, okay. Sounds good. Um, anything else you care to share with us before we part? No, I really appreciate being invited to participate today. It's not often that I get to do this and I really enjoy it. You know, my last and final question for you was going to be, what do you enjoy most about your job, Brian? But at the top of the interview, you started sharing with me a father asking a daughter to be his Valentine. Um, I think that that answers the satisfaction of what you like best about your job is you get to be a part of life moments. What a fascinating experience that must be for you. It's, I, I love what I do and I look forward to coming to work every day. It's not a treasury, it's an enjoyment. Well, thank you so much. We've been talking with Brian Alter with Alter's Gem Jewelry in Beaumont, Texas. Thanks for joining us on this episode of The Chosen Scoop. We hope to see you back here again real soon.